Well, after an eventful week number five in college football, we have a week six that is looking kind of slightly light. Not much flavor on it, but it, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're going to get some flavor on it real soon. And I think we start with the Friday night game that happened, of course, Miami, Virginia Tech, ACC matchup, you know, Cam Ward and the Hurricanes taking on Kyron Drones and the VT offense, which that offense for Virginia Tech was just excellent. Now to play at the very end, of course, you know, Virginia Tech was put was putting belt to booty. For my against Miami in the run game, for the most part, you know Miami was able to rally late, but ultimately at the end of the day, it was a play at the very end of the game in which the refs said, you know, that is not a touchdown for Virginia Tech. That is an incomplete pass. It looked to me, it looked like it was, you know, the ball handler did not handle the ball, you know, completely all the way to the ground. He juggled it a little bit. And ultimately, I think the ball landed on the ground anyway. But, you know, just something to think about. Just something to think about. It, it was a topic of discussion for quite some time, you know, over the past 72 hours. Um, this week, Miami will get the after dark game against the California Golden Bears with Jay Knott, you know, and company. And the Calgarithm, as they call it, Cal Twitter has been on a different level to start the season. They earned that game day. One of the six, yes, I said six power conference teams because SCU is technically a power conference team now. I don't know if they have hosted a game day or not, but, you know, five teams have not hosted a game day. But now Cal is one of the teams you can cross off that list of those six before the season. Now we're down to five plus SMU if that really counts for it. I guess we're back to six, you know. So that will be an intriguing game at night, late night. ACC after dark. The after dark games have been kind of weird this year. You know, this past weekend, Utah lost to Arizona. You know, no Cam Rising still. You know, it's crazy how some statistics are just like, wow, that really is happening. Like, you have DeMar Hamlet playing way more games than Cam Rising did after you know, Hamblin collapsed on the field, nearly passed away. Crazy stuff. To, crazy stuff to make statistics out of, but hey, it is what it is. Um, Utah, again, this was bound to happen with no Cam Rising being able to play. He'll, I don't know when he'll play, and that that will that will certainly help Utah. Let's get that defense. Uh oh. That defense does not look right, and there has been some times where they have not looked right. You know, again, Oklahoma State, for example, you know, they had a 22-3 lead, and they, you know, and they allowed Oklahoma State to come back. And I don't care if it was garbage points or whatever, you don't allow that to happen to make that game close. So Utah with a loss. Ole Miss loses to Brock Bandergriff of all guys, who had 30 yards pass against South Carolina. Remember that? He had 30 yards pass against South Carolina. He had a performance against Georgia that was decent, but again, you know, Mark Stoops did not get the job done, and he finally gets the job done this time around against Ole Miss, and Lane Kiffin is going to Lane Kiffin. You know, there's been some moments where that offense got absolutely stymied. Kentucky was able to, you know, do what they needed to do, which was ball control, ball control, ball control, and throw the ball up and down the field all over that Ole Miss defense. And it's kind of rough, to be quite honest with you, to see that Ole Miss defense get picked apart. The offense, you know, wasn't in tune until very late in the game, which is very concerning because, you know, again, Ole Miss has games coming down the line. You know, Georgia, you know, teams of that nature are coming to play Ole Miss very soon. It's like you got to keep up the grind. Kentucky already had a couple losses in SEC play, and it, it, this is just this is just rough. You know, this is demoralizing. This is a Lane Kiffin disaster class, an absolute masterclass, and have not the coach a game because he does this every single year, and I don't know why. It's the same thing with James Franklin. You know, 
honestly, Penn State, you know, had a tough time at Illinois, but they were put Illinois away late. And yet even that was rough to watch. Even that game was rough to watch because Illinois, you know, they, you know, they had, didn't have the talent, but they were very much competing in the game. Um, can we get the Heisman Trophy to Ashton Janty now? Because he just ran all over Washington State. Can we give it to him? Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Ohio State. Iowa State, Clemson, Texas, you know, although Texas, you know, didn't really do too much until the fourth quarter. Uh, USC was able to pull away late as well. A&M, you know, they're technically not ranked anymore, but, you know, they were able to beat Arkansas in a back-and-forth game in which there were some turnovers late. Indiana is now ranked. Rutgers is getting close to the Big Ten teams that you didn't think You'd be, we'd be talking about at this point, like Rutgers, Indiana, Illinois. You know, they are they are getting the recognition they deserve. You know, Kansas State beat the breaks off of Oklahoma State. And again, the Big 12 is just going to continue to be a bloodbath with BYU also being right. And they almost gave up a lead late to Baylor as well. But the big game, big game this past weekend aside from Oklahoma nearly blowing it to Auburn, you know, or rather Auburn blowing the game against Oklahoma in a funny, funny game, was the top four matchup of Georgia, Alabama. And I got to tell you, Georgia should be like number seven right now, but they're not. And if it were my personal poll, I would have Georgia at number seven. I just, I see it but I just don't believe it. You know, I see it, but I don't believe it. And I see that this Alabama team, you know, Ryan Williams just catching amazing balls each and every play on um, the backfield, you know, led, of course, by Jalen Milrow, who he can throw it too, and he did do that all over Georgia. They were up 28 to nothing at the Crimson Tide were. And then we had the flashback. I was like, oh, wait, something's not right here. And then I remembered. Caleb DeBoer, this is a Caleb DeBoer, you know, you know, coach team, you know, and, you know, last year we watched Washington damn near blow games multiple times. And this was probably the worst example. You know, we're all cheering. We're all, we're all seeing Georgia getting absolutely throttled. You know, Carson Beck looks lost. The whole offense looks, you know, stagnant, uh, emotionless, dopey, all whatever you want to say. And then Georgia came back. And, of course, Alabama put them away at the end, but it shouldn't have came to this in the first place. It should have been an absolute beating from start to finish. Now, Bama took their foot off the gas. You could say that. Bama didn't have the plays they needed to make in the third and fourth quarters, you know, or at least the third quarter in a way to allow Georgia to get back into this game. But ultimately, at the end of the day, Jalen Milrow is definitely, you know, also very much a top three Heisman guy at this point. Like, there is no debating about that, no debate. So you, uh, that's my top two right there. Janty, who ran all over Washington to the tune of, you know, over 200 yards again and multiple touchdowns. And then Milrow also running and throwing for multiple touchdowns. You know, it is what it is. And I'd, I'd say Cam Ward would probably be my number three. But this week, again, this week in college football is going to be a, again, a lighter slate of games. Start on Friday night, two games both kick off at 8 o'clock on the dot. You know, you know, UNLV taking on Syracuse. It's going to be an intriguing game there, you know. You know, you know, the old, the old, you know, Ohio State quarterback, you know, and. In in this in this intriguing game, you know, and the quarterback now for UNLV because Matt Sluka transferred away from you know from UNLV over NIL deals is Hodge Malik Williams, and Hodge Malik Williams played an excellent game against Fresno State in which the the, the Rebels absolutely throttled Fresno State. They beat the brakes off of them. Now Kyle McCord. And the Syracuse offense is coming in, which, you know, Syracuse, you know, they're a pretty decent team. Um, they can play, they can play pretty good. You know, again, another surprise in the ACC this year that's, you know, playing some pretty good football. The ACC is going to be very tightly contested. I think if things go the way they should go, which is, you know, things start to get a little bit highly contested, 
you know, Clemson's asserted their dominance over teams like Stanford right now, but they but they have more tough games in store later. And then Michigan State, Oregon, Michigan State just got beat, just got beat, you know, by Ohio State, absolutely throttled by Ohio State. I kind of expect the same thing to happen here against Oregon. They finally were able to fix, you know, the things for the first couple weeks of the season. Tess Johnson and the company have been cooking, you know. Dylan Gabriel has been cooking. But Saturday, you know, Saturday is going to be intriguing again. Texas A&M is technically not right. They're technically not number 25, like number 26, like they barely missed out. They are taking on Missouri, Brady Cook. And then the A&M team, you know, again, they had to basically go in a dogfight with Taylor Green in Arkansas. You know, A&M, of course, has a new quarterback as well. Um, UCLA Penn State is another game that's happening in that early window, but again, I wouldn't really pay too much attention to it. It's UCLA after all; they just got beat by um, Oregon pretty badly. And if no, you know, Oregon, please do not tout that as like a, you know, as like a Big Ten game that matters. We all know that UCLA is just kind of here in the Big Ten for basketball. They're not here for football. You know, SMU who just finished up beating you know Florida State. Taking on Louisville, um, that game would mean a little bit more, but, you know, Louisville had to basically just kind of fumble the game away against Notre Dame. That and they just did not have their offense in fine tuning, you know, against that, you know, against that Notre Dame defense. And, of course, Riley Leonard and company were able to run all over the Cardinal defense. It, again, Indiana's ranked. They're taking on Northwestern. So, again, watch out for that. Georgia. Georgia's probably going to beat Auburn by 100, you know, just to get that anger out of them, you know, for losing that game the way they did against Alabama. Ole Miss, they have to avoid the upset. You know, Jackson Dart to Trey Harris can't be the only thing that happens. You know, you got to have Parrish in the backfield. You got to have you gotta have everything working for you, Ole Miss. You got to have everything working. South Carolina, I don't know what in the world they're going to put out because – Last time I watched South Carolina, Norris Sellers was not in the game. There was somebody else in the game. Iowa, Ohio State should be a little bit more intriguing this time around. Again, I haven't been very impressed by Ohio State so far. They really continue to not impress me, you know, against a hapless Michigan State team that, you know, you know, Michigan State was 3-0, but it's like it was a, you know, they lost the ball. They, they were barely, you know, they had like a dog fight with Boston College. And then Michigan State is just Michigan State. They haven't been really that great over the past, you know, two years or so. But they, they were able to win some games early on before, you know, they lost to Ohio State. But, again, Ohio State just hasn't convinced me yet. We have to wait until the Oregon game in a couple of weeks to really see where they are. But Iowa is a interesting test. Um, and this Iowa – team has a absolute stud in the backfield of course if you don't know him already if you don't know you got my name of, of, of Caleb Johnson he's in the backfield Caleb Johnson is in that backfield and he has been deadly over 100 yards in each and every game so far this year each and every single one so Ohio State has to get ready for the run. They were picked apart by Marshall for a couple drives. You know, that that's kind of concerning that they were picked apart by Marshall for a couple drives, but it's okay. It's okay. It is fine. Uh, again, Boise State is going to take on Utah State. Clemson taking on Florida, that hapless Florida State team. Alabama taking on Diego Pabia and Vanderbilt, who again just gave Missouri a scare, so you know, something might be fishy. We might be looking at we might be looking at Poppy at time, you know, at home against Alabama. So again, that that's an intriguing game to look at. Don't count out Vanderbilt now. Don't count them out yet. Um, Tennessee taking on Taylor Green in Arkansas. Nico Imaliva gonna have a field day with this Arkansas defense. I just don't really see you know what the appeal is, and then. Um, again, Iowa State taking on a Baylor team that, you know, has lost a few games. They were competitive in at least one or two of them. And then last but not least, again, before, you know, again, before you end your late night with that, I'm going to be watching Bad Blood, WWE Bad Blood during the, 
during the evening window with that that Tennessee Arkansas game. I'm gonna pair that up with Tennessee Arkansas. Also USC Minnesota is in that late window too. But the national championship rematch in Michigan Washington. Now again, Michigan, you know, has to do something about Alex Orgy. You know, you can't rely on Khalil Mullings forever. You know, you can't rely on Donovan Edwards forever too. But it's Donovan Edwards. And Orgy has to get the ball thrown down the field. He's thrown for 32 and 86 yards. It's barely over 100 yards. It's gonna have to gonna have to do something to improve that. You know, you're gonna have to at least throw for 100 yards. This 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 run heavy you know type thing isn't gonna work out in the long run. And you know. Unless, unless you're a team like Army or Navy who's enjoying the successes that they are having this year, again, M- Michigan struggled with Minnesota. They, they were in trouble. They were in some deep, deep trouble. If it weren't for, again, you know, some ref ball late with the onside kick, you know, and, you know, Minnesota didn't get it before 10 yards anyway, but that's another story, you know. Um, you know, we'd be talking about a national championship rematch with a two loss Michigan and a two loss Washington because Washington has two losses already. Again, that roster has been depleted and they have looked where most people expected them to be so far in this season. So again, not, that's not really something to talk about. It's just a national championship rematch with zero or in it. It just happens to be the national championship rematch. Like, wow, we're getting this matchup in the regular season Man, how how things change. How how nine months changes things so much. You know, you know, we had a new, we had a we, we had a new baby, and that baby, you know, we had an we had an old Michigan Washington baby, and it did spectacular numbers. But this one, this Michigan Washington baby of the 2024 regular season. Ugh. I don't think I'd want that one. You know, I don't think I'd want that baby. You know, because that that again, this game is just not, just not, just not a fun one to really look at or even or even talk about. It's just, it's just rough. You know, you know, a run heavy Michigan offense, a Washington team that is depleted of all the, the talent they have, and it's just like why. Why, do, why does it even matter? You know, if Washington beats Michigan, though, that will be funny. That will be really, really funny to see them beat Michigan. You know, that, that'd be funny. But, yeah, Cal, Miami is going to be really the game of the week type beat right here. You know, again, this is a light slate. No ranked matchups at all. Um, I'd say keep out, keep an eye out for Syracuse UNLV on Friday. You know, Michigan, Oregon, Michigan State, Oregon, you know, if – that Michigan State Oregon game gets a little dicey. But definitely turn your TVs on the Syracuse UNLV on Friday night. Going to be a good one there. Saturday, um, your options early are Missouri A and M. Not not a matchup that I would call you know best confidence. Ole Miss, South Carolina in the afternoon window. You know. Uh, Maybe Bama, Vanderbilt, you know, again, none of these matchups popping off the screen to anybody. Arkansas has two losses now, so that game with Tennessee, you know, is kind of eh at this point. You know, expecting Tennessee to take care of business. But but you all know that in a week where, you know, ranked matchups are scarce, things get a little bit crazy, you know. We still have an unbeaten Army, an unbeaten Navy, an unbeaten Rutgers, an unbeaten Indiana you know, like like stuff like that is insane already. Then you have the the Pac-12 adding exact, although that's basketball related, and and Mountain West has added Utah. I mean, what can you say? What can you say about that? The Pac-12 continues to do the, the things they do. So that's it for me. I have nothing else really to say that has been said already. And I hope you all enjoy week six. It starts Thursday night with some Sunbelt action. Includes late at night with that Cal-Miami game. It should be a fun weekend yet again of college football. Cannot wait to talk to you all 
tomorrow and then Thursday night, you know, with the NFL, with the NFL and the NHL respectively, and then, you know, come back and talk college football yet again. It's going to be a busy October, so spooky season is here. Glad y'all are with me for the ride, and let's get to 300 subscribers as well. Thank you all so much, and have a good night.